Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and what I've got here is the Synology DS415 Play. This is a NAS device, or network attached storage device, where you can centrally store all of your files, be them videos or photos, and then you can access those across many devices on your network. So you could access your photo files perhaps on a laptop, or your video files on your games console. Now I'm going to give you a physical look around the device in this video and then I'll move on to actually installing the hard drives and then show you how to set this up on your computer as well. So starting off at the front here, we've got this glossy cover, a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, but this is uh, hiding the actual storage bays for the hard drives and it just simply comes off like so. And then behind here, we've got all of the caddies where you can put up to four three and a half inch SATA hard drives. I'll show you how you do that in a short while. And then along this side here at the front, we've got some status LEDs, one for overall status, and then separate LEDs referring to each of these disk drive bays. Then we've got a USB socket connection on the front and a power on off switch with a further LED just on the corner here. Around on the side, we've got the Synology branding. Looks really nice from this side angle. And then around the back, this is where all the connections are. So we've got a couple of fans to keep everything cool inside. And then we've got all of the connections on the back. We've got a little reset switch, a couple of USB sockets, a gigabit ethernet port, a Kensington lock, so you can tether it to a desk for security. We've got the input for the power supply, and then a couple of USB 3 sockets. Now, apart from the actual DS415 play that you see here, you do get extra bits and pieces inside the box. You get a power cable. We're in the UK, so this is a three pin UK power cable. And then on this end, we've got the standard sort of three pin or three socket IEC connector. Then we've got a ethernet cable supplied for connecting it to your network. Next up, we've got the multi-voltage power supply. So this will work in any country. You just buy a country specific power cable to go with this. We've got a little bag of screws for connecting the hard drives into the bays. And you probably won't need these, but in some instances you might, especially if you're installing smaller hard drives into those bays. And then last but not least, we've got a quick start installation guide. So inside the DS415 Play, I'm gonna be installing these Western Digital hard drives. A big, big thank you goes out to Western Digital for sending these out. Now, just to explain why I've got two different capacities here, Western Digital sent me out two four terabyte drives, and these three terabyte ones are ones that I'm recycling from a previous NAS device that I was using, so thus the difference in capacities. That doesn't matter because I'm gonna be using a Synology hybrid RAID system, which means that I can mix capacities. And the reason we've gone for Western Digital Red Pro drives is because they offer up really good performance, but also are really designed to work well within a NAS environment. So I'm gonna be installing the hard drives into these four bays here. And the caddies are really very easy to remove. We simply push the little button up at the top here, onto the top of the case, and then remove the plastic caddy like so. Now when I was showing you what's included inside the package, I showed you a little packet of screws. Now you'd use these screws if you were installing two and a half inch hard drives or solid state drives. But we're using three and a half inch devices and we've got some little plastic lugs already installed in here. And you simply remove them like so from the side of the caddy. and then you grab your hard drive and you're gonna make sure that the connections are facing the back. So we're gonna pop it around this way. And then it's just a simple matter of relocating these into the side of the caddy and then pushing them into place. So that's the first hard drive installed, simple as that. And then we simply slide this back in to the main box and then we repeat that for the other four bays. So I've now got the DS415 Play connected to my network via the Ethernet cable and I'm currently sitting in front of my late 2013 Apple Mac Pro. There's a couple of pieces of software you need to initially download. Now these are available for multiple platforms, not just for Mac OS. The first one is Synology Assistant, which you can see front and center in this window here. And this is just primarily 
a discovery tool. It lists all of the Synology products on your network and also allows you to double click on them and then go into their web interface to either manage or configure. Now I've already done this, this is Safari, and you can see here that it's listing my DS415 Play on the screen, as well as various other information about it. Now it also lists that the status here at the bottom is migratable, and that's because the two three terabyte drives that I installed into the DS415 Play actually came from another Synology NAS. The data on those first two drives are indeed recoverable and transferable to the new system. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually set this up as a brand new NAS, so new setup. Now, to do this, I'm going to click on this little arrow here. And then I've got two options. And the two options I discussed just moments ago. The first one is to keep my files and most of the settings or to do a clean installation uh, and keep my files only. I don't really want to keep any of the files, so hopefully I'll get the option to actually delete those later on. So we select clean installation, and it says to download and install the latest disk station manager. I've already done that, so I'm going to install it from a disk, because I've already downloaded and saved it to my downloads folder. So I'm going to go into my downloads, and select the latest disk station manager, which is just here for the DS415 Play, and click on choose. Then click the right hand arrow again. The administrator account is always admin, it's asking me to create a password. Now it's suggested one for Safari, but I always like to create my own, so let's type in a password. And we're going to call this DS415 Geek. Why not? Uh, by clicking Install Now, you agree to the end user license, agree license agreement, which of course we do. All data on hard disks 3 and 4, that's the two new hard drives, will actually be removed during installation. So I'm going to click I understand and click OK. And now it goes through the process of initialising the hard drives and installing the disk station manager to the device as well. So it's now finished installing the disk station manager. I sped up the process so you didn't have to sit through it. And I'm presented with this nice welcome screen with a big next button here. So we click this. It says uh, create quick connect ID with my DS account. Well, I'm going to actually set up a new account, so I'm going to skip this just so you don't see all the details I'm putting in, and then we'll take a look at the following steps in the setup procedure. So we're now on the final screen. It's saying you are all set. So it's inviting me to go to the package center. So I'm going to click go. And here we're presented with Disk Station Manager. And this is just a fantastic environment to work in. It it really is what makes me come back to Synology NAS devices all the time when I'm recommending a storage solution for people. Because not only have you got access to the hard drives for storing your files, you've also got access to all of these applications that you can install that really do enhance the way that you're going to use the product. So just for the simplest explanation on this home screen here we've got like the main recommended applications that you install. We've got Download Station which allows you to set downloads going to your device, to, so to the NAS, and then you can switch your computer off and the NAS will continue the download. We've also got Audio Station, we've also got Photo Station and Video Station. And then down the bottom here, we've got Cloud Station, iTunes Server, Surveillance Station for connecting IP cameras to your device, and Media Server. So plenty to get you up and running. And these are just the recommended apps. If we go into perhaps the Business folder here, you've got all of these that you can choose from as well to install to your Synology device. It really is quite fantastic, really, really good selection on there. So also on the Disk Station Manager, we've got various bits of information and a control panel as well. So the actual information is down here, and we've got a system health monitor, which is telling me the Disk Station is working well, the uptime, a resource monitor as well to show you how the CPU and RAM is being used, and we also get notifications, so we get little messages pop up 
in this top right hand corner here so if there's something that needs your attention you will get a notification much like you get a notification on your smartphone the disk station manager will say hey there's an issue here you need to look at it so really really well laid out and easy to use now apart from the package center which I'll just close down we've also got file station where you can manage your files so if I go into that it will actually uh, allow me to create shared folders so it's saying I've got to create a new shared folder because this is a new setup I'll just cancel that for now and it, this also allows you to uh, create folders and take various actions and, and make settings on shared folders as well we've also got if I go to this next panel down this is the main control panel and it's just again so easily laid out and makes everything instantly accessible we can create shared folders as I just showed you we've got file services user settings group settings a directory service and in connectivity we've got quick connect external access which is what I set up with that account so I can actually access the files that are on the Synology NAS when I may be at a hotel we've got network settings wireless settings and security settings and then we've got information center uh, login style so we can change the login screen to something that we like we've got regional options terminal notification task scheduler we've also got hardware and power options if I take a quick look in here you'll see what this looks like so in hardware and power we can actually enable a power schedule for example so this is trigger times for when the device will turn on and off automatically very very cool so at night time when nobody's accessing the data on the uh, hard drives inside you can have the Synology NAS automatically turn off so very very cool and then going further down here we've got external devices update and restore uh, web services privileges application portal and a media library as well so very very nicely set out and just all of these features and the reliability factor really add up to a, a, an amazing package and one that is very hard to beat so i hope you found this setup guide useful i wanted to close this video out by explaining to you why i would choose a synology device over and above uh, another storage device perhaps another hard drive or a nas device from another manufacturer well the ds415 play gives you the ability to add up to 24 terabytes of storage that is a lot of storage capacity and it's also got a 1.6 gigahertz dual core processor inside so that does a lot of the work for you if you had a software based raid then your computer would be doing a lot of the work but this has got a really speedy processor inside now on top of that you can also install applications on here to increase the functionality and the usability of something like this it's not just for putting your files on so i hope you found this video useful this is the synology ds415 play thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed this video please do subscribe to the channel and i will see you all in the next one thank you very much for watching if you want to see another video of mine please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now and also you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the geek Annoyed channel thanks for watching i'll see you all again next time